السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه In the story of Luqman is one of the most rich and one of the greatest stories within the Quran. We can learn so many things from the story of Luqman. Who was Luqman? A lot of us we think. Luqman was a man, okay? At the same time he was known as Luqman the wise. Luqman, he was known as Luqman the wise. And Luqman was from Sudan. A lot of people don't know that but he was from Sudan in Africa. Alhamdulillah, at the same time, Luqman, there was an entire surah that was brought down by the name of Luqman, Luqman the wise. It teaches us a lot. It teaches us so many things and these things, inshallah ta'ala, with the time span that we have, we will cover it one by one and they are so important, so important that we can take it throughout, we can take it within our lives until this very day, inshallah ta'ala. A lot of us, we play with, you know, video games, PlayStation 3, Xbox, some of the youth, some of the young ones. You just see them literally sitting in front of the TV, two, three, four, five, six hours. And this man, and you think that, you know, he finished the Quran three, four times from cover to cover. Alif, Lam, Mim, Dhalik, Al, Kitabu, La, Rayba, Fi, Huda, Lil, Mutaqeen, from Al, Baqarah, the very beginning of the Quran. Until the very ending, the 114th surah, min al jinnati wa nas, and you say, MashaAllah, you know, my son is inside the room, and what is he doing? You find him with the controller playing video games. After, you know, hours after hours, spending time, you know, some of them, you know, sitting in front of the TV with their cookies, Oreos, you know, milkshake beside them, and just eating, 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 mashallah, just growing weight, you know, sitting in a king-sized couch, you know, because the small one doesn't fit him, and at the same time, just flicking the channels, watching TV after TV. What a complete waste of time. What a waste of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create me and you to be in this fashion, in or to even behave in such a manner. But we are supposed to indulge ourselves in none other than in time management. And that's what many of us lack, especially the young ones, especially the young ones who just waste their time with things that don't really help them in this life and will not even help them in the hereafter. And many of them, you know, you see, some of them, alhamdulillah, they are practicing the religion, but many of them are not practicing the religion. Look at Luqman. Luqman the wise, when he was advising his son, he said to him, Ya Bunayya, Ya Bunayya. And in the Arabic language, Ya Bunayya is so, you know, it's so soft, it has so much rahmah with, within these words itself. Ya Bunayya, oh my beloved son, oh my beloved son. Some of us, when we are talking to our children, we say, hey, my son, come here, or hey you, like as if he's a stranger. This is how some of the parents behave to the children. While, you know, if you behave with them in such rahmah, in such, you know, mercy, they will even, you know, give you a more attentive ear than what you even expected from the very beginning. You see, even in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةً مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ That he says that in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you were, to, he says that, do not, he, he was not hard within the people. He was not hard. He, was, he had mercy to, towards the people. If he was hard and rough and tough, many of the people would have just left. He would, they would have left his da'wah when he was telling and preaching to them. But he, in his example, in the way he exemplified and you know, showed and portrayed himself and you know, showed as the best of examples, it was with rahmah. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةً مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ and if he was hard, rough, and tough, many of the people would have left and they would have closed an closed ear. We say, oh my son, we don't say that. We say, hey you, even oh my son is outside of the books. Hey you, come over here, I'm talking to you. But look at Luqman, he says, oh my beloved son, ya bunayya, when he's advising his son. And if you just go to your son today and you say, oh my beloved son, oh my sweet son, Oh my, you know, handsome son, I want to tell you this, just come to me. And I want to tell you this as your father or as your mother. I can guarantee you that, I can guarantee you that your son will just jump from the couch and he will say, yes, mom. 
and you would be surprised by the way that your son or children, they would even respect you in that case as well. You see, some of us, when we are addressing them, we have temper. And that's not how you know, Islam is all about. We are not supposed to have temper. We, get, we snap by very quickly. We get angry very quickly. When we call them, they don't listen to us. We call them again, they don't listen to us. But then this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are supposed to display patience. Patience, because patience comes so many parts in the Qur'an that it's literally, we cannot count it. How many times? Patient, be patient, be patient. وَبَشِّرُوا sabirin, The بَشِّرُوا sabirin, That the people who are, that, that have sabr, that give glad tidings to them. So many verses, so many verses. So by having, you know, anger problems and by just, you know, flicking up like that and snapping very quickly at your children, it will not solve problems, but rather it will create more problems, except for, especially for those that grew up in these countries, especially because for them, it's either mom, listen to me, and I'm going to listen to you as well. Some of them, they're like that. And for you to adjust and to teach your children that I am your mother, listen to me as much as possible by telling them in the utmost professional of ways, guaranteed they will come to you on their own with their two feet and they will respect you. There are ways to just, you know, get inside the children's head, get inside the teenager's head by showing them love, by showing them smiling, by just smiling at them and saying, oh my beloved son, guaranteed they will come to you. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقُمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that we have granted, we have given Luqman wisdom. We have granted him, him wisdom. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقُمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ And give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, give thanks to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And He has granted him with wisdom, Luqman alayhi salam. And at the same time, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, remember the advice of Luqman. He said, O oh my son, do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not associate partners with me. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ O my son, لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ in the shirk ladulmun adim and by committing this shirk associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great evil, it is a great oppression, it is a great dhulm. Do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bring your child and bring that cute little one of yours, put him right beside you, or that teenager, that of course, whether teenager or not, your child will always be your child and say, Oh my child, Ya Bunaya. La tushrik billah. Oh my son, do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teaching them of tawheed, because tawheed is so important that many of them don't know what tawheed is. They don't know the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell them, Ya bunayya, la tushrik billah. You see? La tushrik billah. Even by smiling. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. And your child or your teenager or your son or daughter will say, Okay, mom, la tushrik billah. Do not associate partners with Allah. I understand that. Just by having that sense of mercy, that sense of open dialogue with them, by the way you, you know, the way you come towards them will have a great effect, like I said before. La tushrik billah. You see, the prophets, the prophets advised, they were also advised that, wa ila madyana akhahum shu'ayba. And another verse, وَإِلَى مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ هُودَ So many verses, وَإِلَى مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبَ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهِنَ غَيْرُ Say that do not associate partners with the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created you. Verses after verses. Do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has created you from teen, from nothing, from clay, from nothing, from a, you know, from your parents, the one who created you from a female and a male who came together, created and formed a human being. Do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. The first advice that he gave to his son, Luqman, the first advice that he gave to his son. لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لظلم عظيم. And then he advised him regarding the parents. 
ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين أن يشكر لي ولوالديك إلي المصير He says ووصينا الإنسان and he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given insan ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه obliged them بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن and your mother had burden upon burden on you وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين give thanks to me and اشكر لي and give thanks to your parents as well this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you the second thing immediately after not associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from shirk being a dhulmun azim next thing immediately Luqman alayhi salam, you know, the next thing that we know in this surah is that, to, you know, be respectful to your parents. They had burden upon burden upon you. So by telling them, them this, to be respectful towards you, to take care of you, to not throw you in a residence home like a lot of people they do. Oh yeah, my mom, no, no, no. She's 90 years old, 80 years old, I cannot take care of her. I'm going to take her to old age home. That was that same mom that took care of you when you were nothing. So by teaching them this in the very beginning, by showing them the, the love that you have for them, they will also return that same love for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you that, be respectful to your parents. Immediately the second thing that comes, be respectful to your parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that if your parents, for example, in that same surah, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبَهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَا He tells us that in the same or the next verse that comes along, be respectful to your parents, even if they reach an old age. And even if they tell you to do something, you should do it as long as they tell you not to disobey, not to, you know, if they tell you to go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they tell you to do things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen does not permit, then you do not do it. But other than that, if they are telling you something within the realm of this religion, then you have to listen. Even if you know that you are right. Some people they say, I'm always right, but my mom is always wrong. I know that I'm right, but my father is wrong. Even if you are right, even if you know that you are right, don't ever forget this, you are wrong and your parents are right. You must think to yourself, how is that possible? Because you have to be, you have to, you know, spread your wings of mercy to your parents just the way that they did for you when you were young. So if they tell you to do something, say, yes, mom, I will do it. If your parents, even if they are non-believers and you are a Muslim and Alhamdulillah you have converted to the deen of Al-Islam and you are a Muslim and at the same time your parents they tell you to do something then you should do it as long as they are telling you to do something within the realm of this religion within the realm of this religion وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ Follow the path of those who turn towards me. Who are, are those that turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? One example, like Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was known as Munib. He was known as Munib. What is Munib? What does it mean? The one who turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the definition of Munib. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, be like him of that Prophet, the one who turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that created him. At the same time, he says, Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, إِنَّهَا إِن تَكُمْ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِّنْ خَرْدَلِ فَتَكُمْ فِي سَخْرَةٍ فَتَكُمْ فِي سَخْرَةٍ أَوْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ Even if it is for a seed, a grain of mustard seed, even if it is that, which is inside a rock, inside a rock, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring it forth. He would bring it forth on the day of Yawm al qiyam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it forth. So know it is that same Lord. Your hands and your feet, everything will go against you if you don't use it in the right way on the day of Yawm al qiyam Oh my son, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya bunayya, ihfadh Allah yahfadhk. You know, be, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will protect you subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, be mindful of him. Even if it is a grain, a mustard seed inside a rock, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring it forth on that day. He would bring it forth. So you cannot hide anything. Literally, you cannot hide anything. 
This is your Lord. This is what Luqman السلام, he said to his son. Ya Bunayya, O oh my son, innaha in taku mithqala. Even if it is a grain of mustard seed inside a rock, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring it forth. Be mindful of that same creator that created you. By addressing the children like this, they would understand so many things, so many things. But for you to just think that they would know this from the back of their head, or they would learn all of this in their sleep, and the next morning you just, you know, imagine the perfect Aisha, or you imagine the perfect Muhammad, by you not really addressing them of these kind of beautiful stories, then it is not really going to be their fault, but it's going to be the parents' fault who did not address their children in this fine, of a fine manner or this fine example. Because this can lead a far, far, far way towards your happiness and towards the happiness of your children. The next advice that Luqman السلام, he gave to his son, Ya Bunaya Akim is Salah. Ya Bunaya Akim is Salah. Murubil Maru, if you want a Hanil Munkar, was Bir Alama Asabak in the Umur. Ya Bunaya Akim is Salah. Oh, my son. Perform the salah and do good and forbid and stay away from the evil. Forbid and stay away from the evil. Perform the salah. Oh my beautiful son. Oh my son. That's at the age of, you know, 16, 17 years of age. I know you didn't pray for so many years because I'm your mother, I'm your father. Ya Bunaya. Oh my beautiful son. Perform the salah. Because by performing the salah, it's gonna tell, it's gonna have you do good and it's gonna forbid you from doing the evil. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. That it will forbid you from doing the evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. On the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, your rank, your skill, your mizan, your good deeds will pile up by praying salah. Oh my son, pray salah. Because salah, you find happiness within praying salah. So, oh my son, please. Pray Salah. And that son of yours, they will pray Salah. Guaranteed they will pray Salah. You know, some of these people, because we look at them, no, 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 I can't talk to this one. This one over here, he has a small mind. If I advise him like this, you know, he's a fish and chips generation. Or McDonald boy, you know, always drinking vanilla milkshake. Nothing's going to go through their head. You know, forget these children. Then it's not going to be their fault. But rather, it's going to be your fault because you are supposed to give the message in the simplest of manners when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you to this deen. Ya bunayya aqim is salah. So beautiful. Oh my son, perform the salah. By even saying this aqim is salah, you will even find tranquility with your heart, within your heart and you will say, yes, I will perform the salah. I will perform the salah. I will do good. I will for forbid from the evil. At the same time, many of us وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرْحَةً إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ وَقُصِدَ فِي مَشْيِكْ وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكْ إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَسْوَاتِ لَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ And he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not turn your cheeks away from people. Do not turn your cheek away from people like you think you're all that. No, you're not. You're just like everybody else. You're just a simply another number. Because whether you have a rank in this world, whether you have a job, a high profession job, whether you're an imam, whether you're a sheikh, whether you're a, you know, a sports superstar that's a Muslim that a lot of people look up to, whether you're somebody you know, that, that is loved in the community, whether you give in charity, whether you do so many good things, don't ever forget that we are all the same. That poor man that has nothing. Poor, only has one clothes, one pair of jeans. Do not turn your face away because you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are all gonna be evaluated on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah in the most fair and just manner. وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرْحَةً And don't walk on the earth with your nose up. 
like you think you are above the entire world. Nobody can be like you. Don't do that because this is not what our deen teaches us. In Allah la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the arrogant one that boosts himself or herself up. وَلَا تُصَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرْحَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ وَقُصِدْ فِي مَشْيِكْ وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكْ And be moderate, be moderate in all that you do and be moderate in your voices. Do not be like the donkeys that raise their voices out loud that have no haya, no shame. Look at this, all of this is compiled right in Surah Luqman. This is Luqman, the wise, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicated an entire surah towards him. Read this surah, learn it, and by you understanding what I have given you so far, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a source for all of us for guidance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a source of ease that we can follow the footsteps of the advice of none other than Luqman, the wise. This is Ahmed Sadiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.